Hello, my name is Amanda Huell and I'm a textile artist in New Mills and today I'm here to introduce a new project for Project Earth from High Peak Community Arts. We've got a four week design project followed by stitching for those of you who like to stitch. And the end result is going to go into the Bureau Cafe in Glossop um, when we're all out of lockdown. We're going to make something for the cafe. Um, so I'm going to give you a little introduction. You should have a handout if you've got the kit through the post. You'll have a handout in there with lots more information on um, and instructions. Um, if you haven't, you can download it on the High Peak Community Arts website, highpeakarts.org. Um, the PDF is the one called MEX1 for the piece we're doing today. So embroidery has been a very important part of Mexican life for centuries and it's been used to decorate their clothing mostly and different areas of Mexico will have different styles of embroidery. Um, on the first page of your handout there's some examples of this. So here we've got a man, a huichol, I think it's pronounced, man, wearing his white clothes with um, a counted embroidery stitch on and then in the centre we've got some Tejuana women wearing their really heavily decorated clothes I think this is a long and short stitch that's done on, on this and on this side there's a picture of Frida Kahlo so if you did the world art project where we made the coasters you'll probably know a bit about Frida Kahlo because we looked at her there uh, Frida Kahlo was famous um, for always being dressed in traditional Mexican clothes with beautiful embroidery on it. She was very proud of her Mexican heritage and that was a way she showed it by wearing the beautifully embroidered clothes. The embroidery that we're going to look at is um, a relatively modern style of embroidery. It was adapted in the 1960s by Atomi women who lived in a small town called Tenango in central Mexico and it was an agricultural area and in the 1960s there was a severe drought and all the crops failed so the people had no income and um, were struggling to survive the men all lost their jobs so the women came to the rescue by developing this style of embroidery which was reasonably quick to do i mean it's never quick hand embroidery but this is a reasonably quick style of embroidery to give a big impact and it's economical with threads so they developed this to save them really and they managed to um, make these embroideries, sell them and produce an income and they still do that now. So the embroideries are designed by a dibujante who is um, a draftsman or a designer, it's a Spanish word for designer and they'll be drawn onto fabric by a designer and then he will take them into the market, the drawings on the fabric and um, an embroiderer will buy a design already drawn and buy the threads from the market then go home and stitch them quite often um, families will stitch together um, and then when they're finished they take them back to market and sell them so we're going to sort of do that same process for the first four weeks we're going to be the dibujantes and um, have a go at drawing the designs out and by the end of that you will have something that looks a bit like this and that can be passed on to someone else to stitch or stitched by yourself and we'll look at stitch in the fifth session and how it's going to be stitched um, so I think that's all I need to say there's lots more information on your handout but there's no point me um, repeating all that now so I don't want to keep you here ages I want you to get started drawing so what I'm going to do now is give you a little demonstration of what we're going to do in week one um, just quickly before I go week one will be about looking at the type of designs that they do and just having a go at drawing some outlines you've got um, we'll look at that in a minute week two will be about putting them together to create a design in the Atomi or Tenango style. Week three will be where you get to transform it onto your piece of fabric. Week four, you get to colour it in so it looks like the embroidery but it's still just on paper. 
and then week five we'll look at the stitch and this is my sample it's not quite finished yet but this is what we'll move on to at the end of the project so I'm going to go now and do a little demonstration of week one and I hope you're going to enjoy the project and join in each week um, and build it up gradually I'll see you in a minute so this is the demonstration for the first part of the project, MEX1. And these are the things you need. You need your black felt tip pen, just a black one. You don't need any of the other colours this week. You need your pencil. You need maybe your eraser and your pencil sharpener. You need the designs from the PDFs. If you've got a kit, they'll be in your kit. If not, you can download them from highpeakarts.org. Um, or you can just look at them online and um, take it from there. You need a piece of this thin newsprint paper or some tracing paper or greaseproof paper, whatever you've got. If you've got the kit, you'll have this newsprint paper. And you need um, something to draw on. If you've got the kit, you'll have a big A3 sketchbook, something like this. I think yours has got a big cat on the front and it's got um, a spiral binding, but the big A3 sketchbook. Now we definitely need that later on, but if you've got some space left in a previous sketchbook from the last project or the world art project, then you can do this week's work in your other sketchbook. You don't have to have the big sketchbook. If you're doing it without the kit, you can use any sketchbook or paper. So we're just going to have a look at how the designs are put together. Um, it's a type of folk art. We're going to look more at folk art in another project later on. It's traditional art and it's drawn by ordinary people, people that aren't art trained. So it's kind of fun. I love folk art. And it doesn't matter if your animal doesn't turn out looking quite like it is. So these are all images that I've copied from traditional Atomi embroideries. And I, I don't know if this is a rabbit or if it's a deer or if it's a horse or what it is. Um, and a lot of the images they draw are taken from ancient cave paintings, but also just from the wildlife they see around them. So this looks a bit like a cat, but it's got rabbit ears. They're really good fun. There's a fish there, some beautiful bugs. If you did the ugly bug ball and you like that, we've got some more bugs here. And this kind of chicken, I love him. They have a lot of birds and chickens. So it's mostly types of animals and plants. Uh, some of the really recent ones have got other things in. I've seen them with cars in. I've seen one with the Incredible Hulk in and things like that. But we're looking at the, the more traditional for this part of it. So you've got these designs, you can copy them into your sketchbook. So let's have a look at this, this flower. You might want to do it in pencil first. And they're fairly simple if you break them down. So if I was going to do this flower, I'm going to start with that bit, that little bit there. And I'm going to bring my stalk down. Doesn't matter how it goes, if it doesn't go quite where you want. And I'm going to put some leaf shapes on here coming down the stalk. A lot of the embroidery uses um, very sim similar shapes. A lot of the different designs have the same shapes. So these leaf shapes will come up a lot. Now I'm gonna take my flower up and it's just like a big triangle really. Make it slightly curved at the top. And then I'm gonna put a frilly edge on it or a scalloped edge. These scalloped lines are used a lot. And the word scalloped comes from a scallop shell might recognize that scallop shell shape. Now I'm going to put a couple of little swirls in, one there, one there. Uh, when the person comes to stitch this, you can stitch up to about one, one and a half centimeters wide. That's about half to three quarters of an inch, no, maybe quarter to half an inch. If the space is too wide, you can't stitch across it. So I'm going to split that into sections by drawing some lines down here. So each section, these vary between about one, one and a half centimetres and that's already quite narrow. All the others on there are okay. But that's what these lines are for, to split it up so when the person comes to stitch, their stitches can go across the whole shape. If you don't want to draw your design outright, you want to maybe trace it. Let's have a look. I'm going to trace this little bee. 
So you can use tracing paper, greaseproof paper, or in your kit you've got this newsprint paper. You put that over, it's quite easy to see underneath. So I'm going to trace with my pencil this little B. So he's got a big oval shaped body. He's got four bits to his wings. Again, they're a bit like those leaf shapes we were drawing on the flower. That same sort of shape again, fitting in there. He seems to have four legs, so it's not, like I say, necessarily accurate, but you can tell it's a B by the stripes. He's got his little feelers up there, antenna, and he's got like a little beak thing here. I suppose that's where he gets pollen from. He's got his eye. Now where his eye's going, I'm going to split that shape across there and I'm going to split it across there. So you've got your sections for stitching. And again, split his body because that shape is too wide to stitch. We're splitting it up into lines to be stitched in. So there's the little B. I'm going to take the design out of the way. Turn the page upside down. So your B's there. I've put him upside down. I'm going to put him coming up towards the flower. And you can see your pencil line through here. So you can very carefully draw over the top of your pencil line. Make sure you go right over the top because you want it to transfer. If you're not that patient, scribble over it. It's going to be much quicker. But make sure you scribble over the lines. Press quite hard so the pencil will transfer onto the paper underneath. So I'm just going to scribble away here for a bit. Um, I won't do too much more because you don't want to spend all day watching me scribbling. Um, I'm just going to scribble all over his face like that, over his antenna. I won't bother about the stripes in his body because I can put those in by hand. I'll scribble over his legs so we've got most of the B and he should have now transferred onto there. So it's quite pale but you can see the little B on here so you can draw over the top just to make him a bit darker if you want to but he's transferred quite nicely. Once you've done that you can put the rest of the bits in. Now you've scribbled on that side you can turn the B back over if you want to and on your original design, now this time don't scribble, but you can draw over the shape. So I'm just going to do his body and I'll put his wings in. Because where you've got that pencil scribbled on the back, you'll be able to transfer it back onto here. Do, whoops, I've gone a bit heavy there and gone through it. So you can see I haven't finished him off, but you can see you could trace the B twice from that one design. And then you can put the little lines in. If you wanted to, you could make the B a little bit more tricky for the stitcher by using the scallop lines. So I'm not putting a design together as such today. I'm just having a go at getting the idea of drawing the animals and the flowers in this style. This one's got a fish on it. In the background, you do do quite a lot of these little decorative bits. So... I'm going to put a, a stalk down there and a flower. I'm going to have a circle for the flower and again those shapes like we used for the leaves and you can just work your way around. They don't have to be all even and perfect. You can have some big ones, some small ones. Just keep working your way around. You've got a flower and on this stem we could put some leaves coming off maybe on stalks this time like this just play about there's lots of different designs and ideas there so have a go at drawing or tracing some of these designs if you want to make your own design up you can but try and follow these rules so everything's in these shapes and this folk art style and um, the spaces aren't too wide for people to stitch. We will have a look at how you can tra transfer one of your own drawings or photographs another week. But for now, it's really just about getting the idea. So have a go at tracing or drawing some of these type of plants and animals. Um, when you've finished, when you've drawn a few and you're happy with them, so I'm very happy with this, then just outline it with your black felt tip pen.
after you've outlined it you can rub your pencil out but just outline it in your black felt tip so you get a really nice good strong outline in your sketchbook and that's it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you're going to have fun drawing some of these atomi style designs and i'll see you next week for how we can put together the individual images to make um, a design that we could embroider so i'll see you next week bye for now